Hi, Supercross fans. Thanks for tuning in to Beyond the Track with Daniel Blair. I'm Daniel Blair. Uh, excited to do this episode. This is episode number 12. It's going to be with my friend Cooper Webb. Um, again, I want to thank Cooper Tires for being a part of this series. This is the 12th episode. Now we're having a lot of fun. Uh, and for me, this is going to be a really fun one because I get to catch up with my good buddy Coop. Lot, lots of things going on in his personal life and his racing life. We're going to cover both of those topics right now. Cooper, how we doing? <laughs> Doing well, man. Just uh, hanging out in Florida on this beautiful day, um, but not too much. Just still recovering from the back and, uh, yeah, getting ready for big things to come uh, pretty soon in my personal life as well as uh, the year coming up. Yeah, 21's coming up fast. Obviously, you got some things you got to get through first, like uh, like a wedding. <laughs> really, <laughs> really soon. When, when are you flying out? I mean, I, the bride's out here, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, next week getting married. Um, I'm in Florida now, still doing the training and uh, some rehab for my back and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll head out there pretty shortly and um, get ready for that. It's uh, it's exciting. You know, can't wait for it. Uh, it's been a weird year with COVID and trying to, you know, get everything figured out and uh, all the rules and regulations. But, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a, a good day and I'm uh, really looking forward to it. So, yeah, I'll be headed out to California for that. And then uh, week after that, I'll uh, get back on the dirt bike and, and start getting ready for this upcoming season. Yeah, I got married in 2004. And there's nothing that I can remember about that year other than my wedding. You know, there's nothing to like go back. Oh, yeah, that was the year this happened. <laughs> you're you're going to always be able to come back and say, hey, we got married on the year that everything happened. And again, yeah. for you guys to even be able to pull off like a public event like that with friends and family, it's, I'm sure that's been difficult, especially for her. I know that's probably something that she handled more. You don't seem like the type that's dealing with that kind of stuff. Am I wrong there? Uh, I've been trying to pull my weight, but yeah, it was, uh, like you said, it's, we had everything decided and figured out and done back in basically March. And then, yeah, when everything went crazy with uh, COVID, we had to restart and start from scratch our, our venue canceled and everything so yeah I'll give mad props to her she's definitely dealt with some adversity there and uh but yeah she's she's doing an awesome job getting everything organized I'm trying to pull my weight you know since I uh have been hurt I've been able to you know get get some things done that maybe I normally wouldn't have been able to if, if I was racing and stuff so yeah you know it's definitely a crazy year like you said you'll, you'll remember it as hopefully that'll be the uh the happy story, you know, to the end this year. And, uh, but yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be exciting when it comes. Hey, please tell me you, uh, haven't tried to influence the decorations or anything like that. Cause I literally gave two cents on mine and I got jumped so hard by my wife and her grandma. They literally said, here's the date, show up, you, nothing <laughs> else. So uh, tell me you're not actually participating other than just maybe not being a pain for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's ultimately it's her day, you know, it, obviously it's our day, but, uh, you know, every girl wants that special day to, to go just right. So yeah, I've been approving, I guess you could say, but, uh, for the most part, you know, they've been pretty on it, her and her, her family and stuff like that. Well, congratulations, man. It's a, it's a big day. And again, I, I'm sure you'll remember it forever. Uh, let's pivot over some racing stuff real quick. You started the motocross championship. Obviously it was a weird schedule. The timing was weird. And then you were out pretty quick. Um, I know you're still suffering a little bit from the injury from back in Supercross. How are you now that you've had some time to just, I guess, let it, leave it alone more than, more than anything, right? Just kind of let the thing heal up on its own. Are you feeling good? I know you're training already, but um, where are you right now? Yeah, I'm about back at it. Um, yeah, like you said, it was uh, unfortunate with, with everything that kind of went down. And after the first round, having to sideline myself, um, but yeah, it was it was mainly just re recovery. I had to do um, some injections to to help with with getting the healing process going a bit more. But just a lot of rehab, um, five days a week for the last eight weeks. I think uh, now it's it's been about twelve now, and um, I was able to finally get on the bicycle and start cycling and doing some more gym stuff and stuff like that about two and a half weeks ago. But yeah, it was it was a very strange one for me I've never really dealt with uh pure nerve and and disc stuff and uh I'm used to just bone stuff where it's hey a few weeks it'll be healed you're good to go so uh this one was was definitely an interesting one but uh I'm, I'm finally seeing the, the bright side to it I feel 
really good. I feel a lot better than I, I have since Dallas, all the way even back to then. Um, you know, I feel like my movement I have, the, the waking up pain-free every morning has been nice for the last th two, two or three weeks now. So, like I said, it's, uh, it came in good timing. And, um, you know, it was something that I was a little worried about, you know, not really seeing the progress I wanted to for the first, shoot, six to eight weeks. But once I hit kind of 10 and, and since then, it's, it's felt better than ever. So, yeah, stoked with that. Um, and, yeah, like I said, just hitting hard with PT and, and trying to do everything I can to make sure that, you know, one, this will never happen or linger me in the future, but uh, to also better myself to make sure that, that it doesn't come back. You know, this, this injury that you had goes back to the Dallas Supercross where, where it happened. I, I still got to say that might have been one of the most painful things to watch for me. Like, I, I, as a former racer, when someone crashes, I can almost – sort of feel what they feel like in my mind I still can't explain that one like I don't even know how you got through I mean the only thing more painful inside that stadium I guess would be just the Dallas Cowboys and the way they play in general but <laughs> um back at that crash though I mean yeah. what do you what are you thinking when that happened because again it, it was brutal and my thought is oh we just lost the champ we just we yeah. lost the champ and then we'll get into the next weekend when you come out and it's just like, what the heck? But back at when that crash happened, was that, was that scary? You know, those first five to 10 minutes, because I mean, yeah. even just the impact alone, not the injury that you found out later, but just the, the impact on the concrete had, I mean, you had to have been scared. Yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't good. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. I mean, uh, even like you said, how it happened, you know, I, I was doing a, like a little bit of a different option of jumping off the second to top one. And, I'd been doing it, you know, the whole time. And that last lap, I was just really going for it to try to get that, that podium position and, and just mistimed it. And it was almost like in slow motion. I remember being able to look up at the top of the stadium and know, wow, this isn't going to be good. I'm headed straight to the concrete. You know, it's, this ain't good. And uh, when I landed and everything, you know, right away, it, it, you sit there and you, you, try to value all right what hurts is it legs arms back whatever and I remember not really feeling much and trying to get up and and it was scary because I I couldn't feel my legs at that point and I was like man you know this this is it and um, obviously as time went by I kind of gained conscious gained more feeling and everything was was coming around and you know just getting carted off that's when I guess it was more like I was thankful that you know, it wasn't worse that I was able to even get in the cart and, and gain conscious of what was going on and just understand that, Hey, you know, you'll be all right. But, uh, man, yeah. So, you know, going to the hospital that night, everything like that, just the uncertainty of everything was, uh, was pretty crazy. But I mean, at the same time, just understanding that, Hey, you know, for the crash I had, especially after watching it at the hospital, seeing what went wrong, it's like, man, I was super lucky. I mean, couldn't have asked for anything better, honestly. So, you know, everyone says that's, that's why you train and that's why you, you do what you do. And, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. So yeah, it was, uh, one of the, the, it was the scariest crash I ever had. And to really be able to walk away from it is, is, is unreal. Coop, one of the things that I value about you as a racer is you're, you're stubborn, man. You're a stubborn racer. You don't like giving up an inch. Um, when that goes down, a lot of people are thinking, oh, he's out. We lost a chance, whatever. What goes into the decision, again, being down a decent amount in points, to just stubbornly say, no, I'm, I'm physically barely good enough. I'm going next weekend. I'm keeping this thing going. Because in all reality, I mean, you were jacked up and you weren't you know you were losing ground on the championship what 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 made you decide that no I'm gonna just tough tough you know get through this thing because it's something that you dealt with the rest of the season what was it what was it about that decision to to go racing that that made you make that decision that you're just gonna you're just gonna tough it out and go and in all reality you didn't really need to yeah I mean uh I think when I knew was you know that night at the hospital the, the team showed up as I was kind of getting ready to leave and you know at that point we had we had only gotten x-rays and nothing was broken and um I remember I was still in the wheelchair getting wheeled out and you know they were just discussing and everyone was glad that I was all right and 
I just remember Ian, the team manager, telling the mechanic, like, hey, go ahead and fly back home tomorrow. You know, don't worry about getting the bike ready for next weekend. And I don't know, just just hearing that, I it just triggered me. And I was like, screw that. You know, that bike better be ready next week because I'll be here. And I think they thought I was, you know, on the pain medicine and <laughs> was just talking talking loopy. But I just knew, I was like, you know what, if, if nothing's broken and I'm able to, to fight for this championship still, you know, I'm still mathematically in it. I'm going to do everything I can. And um, like I said, I, I don't think anyone believed me until I, I got on the airplane and showed up in Atlanta. I mean, it was uh, a tough week. I, I, I started walking the next day a little bit. And then, I mean, when I say walking, it was, it was limping around just barely able to get to the toilet and back and you know I just um I was able to rest that week and and I mean I'm not proud of it but you know we were on some some heavy doses of of medicine and um showed up in Atlanta and and was able to to race and um you know we showed up to press day just seeing if I could ride and we're like all right you know I, I can make it around the track and let's go for it so no, I was just proud of it, regardless of whether I didn't make it that night or, you know, did what I did or whatever, just not giving up, you know, at least giving myself a chance, you know, hey, I gave it everything I had, I pushed my body to the limit, whether it's a did not qualify last place, whatever the night was going to be. And I knew I, I gave it my all. So when it was a, a third place in the way the race went and hard, fighting hard the whole race to get that third, I knew I was like, okay this thing isn't over, you know, and the last thing I think uh, for me, just the championship, just wanting to win was what kept me going. And, um, you know, I, I toughened it out again at Daytona and then we got the news that, Hey, it's, we're at a standstill. So, you know, I think just, um, just not wanting to give up, you know, I guess that's how I've always been, like you said, stubborn and, and just, if there's a, a slight chance, then that's a chance, you know, and, and that's the way I look at a lot of things. I think back to the Vegas Supercross back when you're on the 250 and you had the wrist injury. Same kind of scenario where it's like you, you knew what was coming was something very difficult physically. Not, I mean, you know how mental the sport is. You're, you're very good at that part of the game. But the physical side is really tough when you're dealing with an injury like that. And uh, I have to imagine that you were kind of relying off of some of those old memories, knowing that, hey, I've been in a situation before where I'm hurt, but I pulled it off. You want a title that night. So... Was there a little bit of that going on too, just knowing that you've been in situations where being, I, I guess, let's say hurt even more than injured, like physically yeah. in pain. <clears throat> did you know that you'd be able to pull it off or were you literally going to Atlanta going, like you said, just as long as I'm here, that's at least one step. But did you really have the faith Saturday morning that you were going to line up for a main event and, and battle for 20 plus whatever? I mean, did you, was there that belief too? Or were you just hoping like it worked out? It just... I was needing a miracle. <laughs> I was needing a miracle for sure. But I mean, I, I went there to race, you know, that was the plan the whole time. And that was, like I said, when, when the gate dropped, whatever my body was able to, to endure, then that's what it was going to be. But um, I went there to race. And like you said, I've, I've raced and won the championship that night, two weeks after breaking my wrist and um, just knowing like, Hey, the, you never know in racing what can happen. And at that point, I, I had had a bad, a few bad races, but you're, you're almost the rider that wins the championship. You know, they say it's all about damaging your bad nights and the, the top two at that time, they hadn't had bad nights yet. So that's what I think just kept me in it. Like going, you know what, there's whatever it was, 12 more rounds left, 10 more rounds left. And you never know, you know, they could, it could have been that night at Atlanta that, you know, say, a DNF or a crash that I had and all of a sudden I'm right back in it. So I think that's more what it was, you know, if it would have been one round to go or, or two rounds to go and it's that big of a, a difference, then you're like, ah, you know, no, it's, it's not. But when, when you're midway through the season with plenty of races left, that's where I, I kind of just knew like, Hey, you know, this is my shot. If, if I do want a shot and obviously I didn't end up winning the championship, but I was able to get second, which, you know, had I not raced, I, I wouldn't have even been able to get into that position or into a top five position. And, you know, I took it 
mathematically all the way to the last round. So, you know, like I said, obviously it's, it wasn't the goal I wanted, but to know that, Hey, I, I pushed beyond physical ability, mental abilities and, and was able to take it to the last round into the championship, um, deciding race then Hey, I gave it my all. And, and that's all I can ask for. You know, you might not admit this on this interview, but I know you well enough to know that you're not afraid to do a little messaging too, just the way you do things and say things to the competition. Do you think that had a little bit of effect on the competition? No one, I mean, they all live in reality. They knew that you got jacked that night and when you showed up the next weekend and got on the box, do you feel like a little bit of messaging was sent? Like, Hey guys, no matter what you think, yeah. I'm not out of this. I can only imagine you, if someone, if, if Eli or Zach or Kenny or Jason, if they did what you did, I can't imagine you not being on the gate going, man, this, this guy, yeah. this is, this is annoying. Cause I can imagine they were annoyed with you when you should have been Atlanta could barely walk to the gate, like a, like Frankenstein and then got on the box. I, I have to imagine that they were extremely annoyed by that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I sure hope so. <laughs> That's all I could ask for, but no, for sure. I mean, like you said, I've, I've been in that position where I've seen a, a racer do that and, I guess that's the, what I want as a racer is just to know that, Hey, Coop's never going to give up. You know, he, you, you can throw a lot at him and, and he's not going to give up. And that's, that's really what I, I pride myself in. And um, that's what I, what I work towards, like you said, is, is that stubbornness in me of, Hey, you know, I'll be there at the end, no matter what happens. So, you know, obviously in racing, you never know. And, um, but yeah, I mean, from, from, from that perspective, I'm sure it was like, dang man you know he, he's not gonna go, <laughs> go away dude there. just go away <laughs> and, then, and then there you are dude and then I, I just gotta bring up the rib thing like how'd that feel I like I said you're dealing with enough as it is but then with the thing I mean you're all compressed like I don't even what they have on you I mean I know they had you wrapped in something but yeah I mean, I know we, had, it, we had basically we had had my back from my butt cheek all the way to my nipples just tight as possible you know um, with tape and kidney belts and everything to try to make the uh, the back stable but in doing so you know I had it so tight that yeah I, I popped two ribs out of place so that was uh, <laughs> pretty gnarly when I got back it was almost like hey I need to get this taken care of now you know the back yeah it's hurting but so yeah I mean like I said just um, it's it is really when you look back I mean what you what you can put your body through is is pretty amazing and there are times where you have to kind of swallow the, the pride and understand hey if it's gonna you know affect your well-being and, and your body for the rest of life or the years to come that you have to take time to, to sit down and get things fixed which I had to do for my back for this outdoor series but you know for for in our sport you got to be tough you know it, it's pretty clear and um that's one thing that I feel like I I've always been pretty good at is, is being able to tough things out. In Atlanta, you didn't go to the press conference that night because you were in too much pain. I thought maybe you just didn't want to hang with your boy. I don't know. No, I, I just didn't want to hang out with you actually. Yeah. It's, I just, I figured maybe you just didn't want to hang. I, I you were using it as an excuse. That's what I thought. But um, let's just pivot out off the racing for a little bit. I know this has been a little bit of a change for you being in Florida now for, I mean, you've been there now, are we had two years, two yeah. years. Yeah. How, how, I mean, how's life away from the track, just being in Florida. I, I mean, I know what you go through when you're training and at, at the track, but how is Florida? How, how are you liking it? I know you have a soft spot for home. I know you want to be back there someday, but currently is, is, is Florida working out? Has it been okay? Yeah, it's, it's hot. That's something to bow about it. Um, but yeah, so far it's been good. You know, I think, um, like you said, I, I was able to live in North Carolina for a few years and uh, I really love it there. And, you know, I'll definitely retire there. And, and like you said, one day would love to, to go back and be able to do my racing again from there. But uh, for the time being, you know, with going to Red Bull KTM at the time and the changes that needed to be made, we, we decided to, to come to Florida and do everything we could. And, you know, it's, it's not bad. It's, uh, it's still, even though it's East coast, it's still a lot different than North Carolina. I mean, um, so that, that took some adjustment. And um, like I said, the heat is definitely no joke. I mean, the humidity day in and day out can took a toll on me the, the first year for sure. Even it's December and it's high eighties, you know, that that's uh, pretty unheard of in, in most places. So 
it took an adjustment, but uh, yeah, it was good. You know, obviously there's a lot of riders here and stuff like that. And so you'll see some out of them out and about and been able to make, you know, friends with other riders, but as well made friends with, with people from, um, from around here and stuff like that. And um, so it's good. You know, I think um, for, for racing, sometimes you got to put aside what, what you really like and have to kind of make a sacrifice, if you will. Um, it's not a bad place, but you know, it's a place I wouldn't live forever. But at the same time, I've, I've lived in much worse places. So like I said, sometimes you got to put your career up number first and whatever it takes you'll do. So I'm uh, starting to like it more. Like I said, now that I've gotten more routine, know a lot more people, um, you know, I, I am appreciating being here more. And, and even though the weather, once I got over the weather being extremely brutal, it's, uh, it's been really nice. And it's the, the rain is no joke. That's for sure. You have your afternoon storms every single day. And once you get used to that and you feel your house shake from the thunder every day, you're like, all right, that's the new normal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I can't imagine. And uh, for me, it's like Florida sounds great and all, but just the snakes and alligators and bugs, I, I feel like there's just too much down there for me, man. I just, that was when we, you know, <laughs> we go to Alden's place and um, it's, it's magnificent, but you, you literally have to worry about stuff I've never even heard of. I mean, uh, <laughs> the snakes that I've seen, the, they got these, I forget what they call them, these ants, cow killers is the nicknames. They got these hornets you got to watch out for. Um, I mean, I've never seen an alligator on the property, but I've, I've seen them around and stuff like that. And it's bad when the alligators are like, oh, those aren't that big a deal. You got to worry about the, the water moccasins. <laughs> the hornets to this to that but uh it is it is a dang strange place when it comes to that how's it been uh with the crew down there obviously there's changes happening all the time i know jason anderson is no longer there you know rj hampshire some of you and i have talked about before a guy that you grew up racing i think you guys didn't you guys battle like on 50s or yeah right is that what it was uh, yeah right so just with the crew always kind of changing zach's been there now for a while um, what's it been like just kind of being a part of that club again, where you're, where you're, you're hanging with these guys, whether you like it or not, that's, that's, that's your, uh, it's your, it's your camp people. So what, what's it been like with those guys? And uh, you, you happy so far with just everything that the, yeah. the change that <clears throat> come in all the time? Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, it was, it was definitely a tough adjustment, um, for, for those guys, I'd say more than myself. I think like you kind of alluded to before, I'm a, I'm a very stubborn racer and, you know, we'll kind of do whatever we need to do to, to secure a win. So I think coming in, you know, I'd really never talked to Zach. I had never talked to Marv. I had really never talked much to Jason at the time. And, um, and now trans transforming to two years into it. Now I consider those guys good friends. So, um, you know, from, from a racing and outside of racing standpoint, it's cool. Like to be able to, to call those guys or, or talk to them about stuff that has nothing to do with racing and, to know at one point they, they probably hated my guts. So, um, you know, it, it was definitely a transition and, and it took a while for, for I think everyone to, to kind of get past that little bridge or whatever. But, um, you know, it's, like I said, it's, it's cool to have a, a really good group of guys to train with. You know, I had never talked to Mara really before coming here, Zach, RJ, and now, like I said, I consider all of them good friends. So, um, it's cool to see, you know, I mean, even from, for me, seeing Zach win that championship, like in outdoors this year, it was, it was cool to see, you know, I was, I was happy for him as, as a friend and I know what we all go through here. So, uh, yeah, the group's awesome. I mean, and with Alden, it's, you know, you, you want to have that, you want to have a very good group of people around you. And as long as you have the understanding of, Hey, we're all here to win. And, and on race day, we're, we're there to make sure that we do our best but during the week that we can kind of push that aside and, and understand that, Hey, as, as a group, we, we, we work really well together and, uh, for that, for that goal, you know, so it is hard, but, uh, I feel, I feel like we all manage it really well. I'm kind of surprised to hear you say you and Marv weren't friends before you got there. I, I thought you guys were best buddies <laughs> before that. That's yeah. I mean. I mean, like that's I, a perception from the outside looking in. We thought everyone thought you guys were best buds before you got there. No. Yeah, we did a lot of battling in the 280 class, and 
you know, I was definitely had some, some learning to do back then. So, uh, you know, I was able to mature definitely. And, uh, but even with Zach, I mean, we had some, some battles and some, some run-ins and stuff like that too. So, uh, like I said, I think it's, it is funny now looking back how it all works out and, and, and everything like that. So it is cool though. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm fortunate to, for us all to have, uh, have a good squad. How funny is it at times? Cause I've, I've heard you guys, I've heard stories of you guys, you know, in the shop in between motos and just jib jabbing each other, playing around, whatever. But when you think about, you have Jason Anderson, someone that you know who has got his style of who he is. And then you got Zach, who is, I mean, are Jason and Zach not the two most polar opposites? <laughs> and then, you, and then Marv, he's got his, you know, life. And then you have, you guys were all so different. How are, how are those shop days when you're in between motos and you're dealing with personalities that are all, you're all doing the same thing, but you are not yeah. maybe thinking about it the same way, going home to different situations. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like an oddball grouping of people. No, for sure. I mean, that's the, that's, that's what's kind of funny to me is how it works out because we are all so different even now, you know, with everyone there, like we get along great. And I think if, if they were able to see what goes on in the, the banter we have in between motos and stuff you would you could almost make a tv show out of it so it is it is fun i mean it's fun i know it's hard for people to grasp that and i i would wish you know some people could be on a fly on the wall to see what what really happens but like i said we're all in different positions with from our age differences to just our lifestyles you know where we came from everything is it's all so different about us and uh but I think that's what makes it work, you know, when we'll look at one of one each other or something and just be like, man, what are you thinking? And vice versa. So <laughs> it's, uh, it is pretty funny. Uh, let's go back to Salt Lake. Um, obviously, everything gets shut off quick, right? And I, I have to imagine at that point, you're maybe a little relieved when you heard that we were going to, I mean, obviously, I think on a macro level, we all take this situation very seriously and our hearts go out to everybody affected. But from a, just the racing side, was there a little bit of a sense of relief that, hey, I'm going to get a little break here to heal up, which you obviously did. Then you came out in Salt Lake, like swinging hard. I mean, it, it, was, it was a great run you had there. But was there a little bit of a, from the, from the racer side, just like, whew, all right, let me, let me have a little break here, heal up so that I can put together a run, which is ultimately what you did. I think you had the most points of anybody in the last seven rounds. Um, was there a little bit of that going on when you knew that you were going to get some sort of a break, even though we didn't know how much it was going to be? Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was good timing is, is what I'd like to say. But uh, yeah, like you said, it, it was crazy to think that that could happen. I mean, um, especially at the time and, and at Daytona, you know, and looking back now to how it went from, you know, full everything wide open at Daytona to four days later, everything coming to a complete halt. So um, it, it was good, good timing. Like I said, um, we were able to, I don't remember exactly how much time we had off, but I was able to take, I think it was three weeks completely off, which um, really helped, you know, with my back and everything like that. And then I was able to get back to going and, and, you know, get some good training and riding and, and test days and, and really try to, I mean, at that point, we still didn't know when we were racing, where we were going. You know, I think it wasn't until two weeks before that we really even, all of us even knew what the heck was going on. I mean, shoot, we all heard a hundred different plans. So um, I'll give it to Alden. He kept pushing us saying, Hey, you know, we're going to race. It's just going to be a matter of time. We got to stay on it. We got to keep doing what we're doing. And cause it's hard. I mean, when you don't know, it's tough to be out there training and, and riding and giving it your all every single day. And you have no, nothing on the calendar, you know, no, nothing, you know, and there's, there's talks of, Hey, we might not race the rest of the year, you know, that it is. So it was tough to, to, I think just the unknown of that. Um, but yeah, once we finally figured out like, Hey, there's a game plan. It's looking like this, you know, yada, yada, yada. I think that's where it was like, all right, it's, it's game on, you know, there's, there's seven rounds. And, um, for me, I, I loved the, the schedule of it, you know, just purely racing. I thought that was awesome. Um, and so, like I said, I think it, it fit what my strengths were a lot more, which is racing and the tracks being different. I mean, and even in the seven races that we had, we, 
with the weather and stuff like that, we did have some different conditions. So, um, but yeah, when, when we got there, I think it was all new to all of us. We didn't know what to expect, but just the fact that we could finish, I, I think that's what the big asterisk was, you know, Hey, if, if we're not able to finish this supercross championship, is it a championship? You know, it's hard to say. Um, so that's what I was stoked about that. We were able to do all the rounds, you know, complete the actual championship and, and do it how they did it. I think exceeded everyone's expectations. Um, you know, I, I'll be honest. I thought, man, this ain't going to go well after one or two rounds, something's going to get shut down or, you know, someone's going to get test positive or whatever it is. And we're all back to nothing. So uh, it was cool how it worked out. As far as your racing there, were you pretty happy overall? Again, I, I mean, I thought you put together a great seven round run. You were, you were definitely not making it easy. Eli had a situation where he, he had control. He was just managing and controlling and I, I have to imagine that you were making things very difficult for him because you, you weren't letting up. Um, were you happy overall with just that block of seven? Again, I know you wanted the title overall, and that's what you were chasing. That's why you were there. But if we just focus on the seven, were you happy with that run? Is that is that yeah. the seven race run that you can take to 2021 and go, oh, yeah, yeah. like I'm good to go? Yeah. No, absolutely. I think um, re regardless of it all, you know, it was it – was, a great seven races for me. I think it was uh, a complete turnaround from the, the beginning of the season. I mean, granted, before Dallas, I think I was still 11 down. So, I mean, we're right there in the mix, but obviously Dallas was the, the gut wrench. So going to Utah, which is kind of that, that extra motivation of like, you know what, let's, let's turn this around and let's, let's show that, Hey, I'm, I'm a contender and that I won this title last year for a reason. So, um, you know, I think I, out of seven races, I outscored, like you said, by eight points. Um, the last the last main sucked. You know, I fell on the first turn and fell again and just wasn't able to kind of get going. But um, to get first and second, six out of the seven was, was huge. And um, like I said, I felt like I kind of reestablished myself as, as, you know, me and Eli, if you will. Um, you know, and, and Ken was in there too. But – I think before that it was it was more the Ken Eli show for sure. So um, it was good to reestablish myself and and just let everyone know like, hey, I'm you know I am a champion and I'm a winner for a reason and uh, here I am. So that stretch was awesome. I mean the the battles that me and Eli had, the races we had was was awesome racing. You know, hard fought racing and uh, yeah, like I said, I gave it my all. I, I did everything I could and I don't think I could have asked for a better stretch of racing. I mean, it'd be easier for me and you to talk about the ones that you won, but I got to bring up the one that you didn't win, barely, the mud round. I, I, honestly, man, I, straight up, were you even aware the last five laps? Was that just pure instinct and, and subconscious riding? Because you guys started doing some stuff that was insane, especially the triple out of the inside, which I think you even told me you didn't even plan on doing until you did it. What what is honestly going through your mind five minutes left in that race when the track is just a mess and you guys are elevating, elevating, elevating? Again, was it was it just instinct? Were you go going off instinct and just pure subconscious? I, I can't imagine that you were just making all conscious decisions. I don't even know if that's possible in those conditions. Like what take me to those five minutes and I mean what what are you what are you thinking to close that main event? All you're thinking is, I mean, at that point, winning, it takes over, you know, like whatever it takes, whatever line I have to do, whatever jump I have to do, you know, how, no matter how sketchy I have to get, like, I think at that point, we both just wanted it so bad. I, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I was, you know, if I, if I ate crap and wasn't able to finish, then whatever, I'm going for it, you know? And um, it is crazy when I look back, just the amount of times we pass each other, the speeds that we were going, the, <laughs> just the amount of people that, trying to maneuver around was was insane and and looking back obviously at the time I was bummed I didn't win but looking back knowing that that was probably one of the most fun races and, and hard battling races I ever had and yeah we left it all out there just just doing kind of some unthinkable stuff at the time and um, 
so yeah, I mean, that was, like I said, even though it ultimately was a second, that was probably my favorite race of, of that whole entire time. And, um, you know, that's where, where I gained a lot more respect for Eli then was just knowing like, wow, you know, he doesn't have to be pushing these, these extremes that we're pushing. And, and he, he was kind of the same thing as me, you know, Hey, we're going here to win and let's go. So like I said, it was, it was a really cool race. Obviously, I'm sure the fans were, were stoked. I think everyone was stoked and, and getting back. And when they said, Hey, you, you guys lapped everyone, but Jason, I was like, I know we've passed a lot of people, but holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was a lie. You just didn't know who they all were. Everyone was brown. I, I, again, and you mentioned how much you respect Eli for that. I, I got to take you back to that moment again. Were you a little surprised? Because from a point standpoint, he didn't have to do that. In fact, you would think maybe it was a, a little reckless on his part to push that hard. Were you in that yeah. moment going, dude, what are you doing? Like, you, you've got a decent lead in the championship. Like, I have to imagine something took over in him, too. You guys just, like, got lost in that moment. But were you a little surprised that he was willing to hang it out like that when he had a points lead and he could have cruised yeah. it in for a second? No, I do. I remember halfway even thinking that, like, all right, he's going to roll over here shortly. You know, it's just a matter of time. We we both had gotten sketchy. We had both had probably almost crashed a few times. And that's where I, I kind of got to a point where I was like, all right, you know, he's going to think big picture here here in a second. And it, it never came around. So I stepped it up and passed him. And, and when I got in the lead, I don't remember exactly how much time left, but somewhere at, later in the race, I had gotten into the lead and, you know, kind of, I thought, all right, this is the point where, he just settles for second and whatever. And, um, yeah, it, it didn't happen. And, and he did that triple by me in the rhythm. And I was just like, all right, I guess it's, it's came on. We're going for it. So like you said, it was, it was cool. Um, I wish he would have rolled over and just said, Hey, you know, go for it, man. It's, it's all you, but, uh, you know, you, you gotta appreciate someone that's, that's willing to, to battle like that to the very end and, um, leave it all out there. If I remember correctly, I, you may have even passed him in the whoops. Yeah, I was hitting him good. Good job, time, dude. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right by him. I mean, yeah, I was – obviously, as as we know, I feel like at the beginning of the year, the whoops were, were a struggle, and, and that's what else I felt like the last seven I was able to, to come around a lot on and, and fix and felt like I, I wasn't losing like I had been all year. So uh, that was another positive. But, yeah, I mean, just to – Looking back, I think half the field was rolling through the whoops, and then here we are just giving everything we had through them. So that was uh, pretty cool. I know with you guys, with that motorcycle, I, with any bike, you're, you're, you're fighting one thing or the other. If you want the bike to corner a certain way, you got to give up a little bit. If you want it to be great in the whoops, you got to give up some cornering. Was that one of those races where you came off and go, hey, buddy, you know, to the team, Roger, everybody, the crew? I think we got this thing worked out pretty good because it looked like, again, you were cutting in the mud. Um, the cornering I felt was great the entire trip, yet the whoops did look a lot better. Mostly, I think, with you and your confidence. Was that a bike thing or a you thing? Because something changed where I noticed that you were entering harder. Every, every little bit of the whoops seemed better. Was it a combo of both? I mean, what, what was really about that big improvement? Because it was, it, I mean, it was hugely noticeable. Yeah, I, it was both. You know, I think um... – I was able to go to California a few weeks before Salt Lake and, and do some, some, it really, we weren't even supposed to really do it. Uh, the testing that we did, it was something that they were actually getting ready for, for next year, meaning 21. And, um, I, I noticed the test rider that we had on it and how, how much better he looked. And I was like, I just hopped right on his bike with his bars, his everything and got on it and, I think went like a second a lap faster. And so that's when I, you know, told the boys, Hey, which they knew as soon as they saw me, they're like, well, I guess we gotta, gotta get this race ready. And we have two weeks to, to get it here. So it was cool. I mean, we, we, uh, they, they, they stepped up big and, and saw, you know, I can tell them what I'm feeling, but you know, it's up to them to, to produce it and, and make it uh, better. So it was a really good team effort the whole trip. Like you said, the bike was awesome. I felt like my confidence really came around. I was riding well and, and everything's were, were clicking, you know, the starts were back, everything. And, um, so yeah, I got to give it up a lot to them and, and them 
making that commitment and um, us going there with, like I said, there, we, we probably only put three days of riding on, on what I raced with at Salt Lake. So for, for me to trust that, Hey, we're not going to have any failures or for them to know that, Hey, this is uh, what we're going racing. And so, yeah, it was just cool to see the commitment that, Hey, if, if it's better and we're, we're here to win, we'll, we'll, we're here to do it. So yeah, it's uh, really good. So to close 2020 out, getting married, the body's healing up. Um, Salt Lake again, major bike improvements in 2021 stuff, maybe a little early for setting wise. So it sounds like everything's kind of building to end this year in a positive and move into 2021. Uh, my last question for you is as a racer, you're always looking for ways to be better. Um, I've seen improvement with you, even in the area. Again, you won the championship two years ago, but this year alone, you made improvements in your practice speed. Um, the whoops came around what's what's next for you to improve on if you're going into 2021 and you want to get that title back where do you got to be better you're a great starter you're a fighter you're obviously well conditioned your bike's great personal life's going well what's missing for you where, where do you feel like you got to get better with two and a half to three months left before we go up battle again i what's what do you feel is missing and and what are you looking to improve for next year before we get going What's missing is the uh, number one plate, man. That's uh, <laughs> what we're working for. We got the two back on there again, and, and I don't really like the look of that. So, no, I think, like I said, I, I, I ended the year on, on a high. Um, you know, I, I, I really believe, like I just said, that, that motivation to get that, that number one back is, has already kicked in, and, and all the prehab and rehab I've been doing is that's already what I'm thinking about is – how I can improve. And, and I mean, the class is gnarly, you know, it's stepped up a lot, even from 2019, we have new guys coming in, everyone's going to be good. And, you know, that's, that's the cool part of, of the 450 class and going racing here is knowing there's a lot of really talented and, and champion guys, you know, it's, it's not going to be easy. So I think that's the thing, you know, keep improving on starts, speed, you know, fitness, everything's an improvement. I, I think, um, you know, I'm at the point now where, I'm 24, you know, I think mentally I'm, I'm getting better, you know, physically I should start getting better as well. And, um, it's just looking positive. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is, is just looking forward to everything coming up. You know, it's, it's not something where it's a drag or, you know, there's, there's nothing to be better at. I mean, you say those things saying, Hey, you know, you're good here. You're good here. You're good here. But we're looking for, tenths is all we're looking for you know and and whether that be in the whoops or the corners um racecraft whatever it comes down to you just got to expect that everyone else is is picking up those one percent each day and that's what i need to be doing too so um like you said it's 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 a good time for me in my life everything is smooth i'm i'm happy i'm in a good spot i'm i'm with my team and and i'm everything's settled for for the next few years and but at the same time it's you just want that, that number one, you know, that's, that takes over everything. So, uh, yeah, I think for me, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to is just, uh, grinding it out this off season, being the best of myself I can be and, um, starting up on that starting line in 21, which it sounds like everything's a, a green flag. So should be good to go. Well, Coop, congratulations again on the marriage. Uh, personal life matters, too. I know we get caught up in the racing all the time, but it's uh, good to hear that that's going down for you. Congratulations. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in January and see what we can do about that number two. Try to get that number one back on there. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. It was fun.